हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय चैनल दिस इज डॉक्टर मीनाक्षी गुप्ता आई एम कंटिन्यूइंग माय टॉपिक एंटी मलेरियल ड्रग दिस इज द सेकंड वीडियो ऑन द एंटी मलेरियल ड्रग सो इन माय प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द लाइफ साइकिल ऑफ द मलेरियल पैरासाइट एंड व्हाट आर द वेरियस एंटी मलेरियल ड्रग व्हिच आर गोइंग टू एक्ट एट द वेरियस फेजेस ऑफ द लाइफ साइकिल ऑफ द प्लाज्मोडियम then classification of the anti malarial drug what are the ways how we can classify the anti malarial drug just have a quick look on the previous uh, lecture so the life cycle of the plasmodium is in the human we will see the two phases one is pre erythrocytic and the erythrocytic phase whereas in the mosquito will be the gametocytic phase so mosquito that is a definitive host except in plasmodium falciparum in rest of the species we see the axo erythrocytic phase so at the different different stages we have uh, uh, going to give a different different clinical use like in a pre erythrocytic phase which is a cause of the malaria if we go are uh, going to give the drug at this phase it is going to give the casual prophylaxis erythrocytic phase which is the going to cause the symptoms of the uh, malaria if we are going to give the drug then it is going to give a clinical cure and if before the rupture of rbc if we are going to give the drug this is going to provide the suppressive prophylaxis then to prevent the relapses if we are going to give the drug which is going to hit this hypnodroids or exorythrocytic phase this is going to give a radical cure and if we are going to kill the gametocyte that is going to prevent the transmission of this from the human host to the mosquito so then how we classify this anti malarial drug one is depending on the clinical cure this is the depending on the clinical cure there are the two prophylaxis and two cure casual prophylactic suppressive prophylactic one two then we have a clinical cure radical cure and gametocidal drug another way depending on the plasmodial state we have a cyzonticidal and gametocidal drug and cyzonticidal drug we have a tissue cyzonticide or hepatic cyzonticide and erythrocytic cyzonticide tissue cyzonticide which is going to act on this pre erythrocytic that is called primary and which is going to act on the exo erythrocytic that is called the secondary so this is the second way of classifying this anti malarial drug the third one is depending on the chemical structure this i have taken from the standard textbook that is tripathi this is a one way another way you can write it in a uh, simple way also the anti malarial drug this is a chemical classification so this was a uh, just a quick revision of the first video if you haven't if you want to watch the detailed video i will be giving a link in the description box so you can click the link and watch it in detail now continuing with the individual drug so the most important drug here is like four amino quinolone that is a chloroquinine okay so chloroquinine so if you know this so far if you know all this if you have understood this one clinical how we uh, classify depending on the clinical use depending on the plasmodial state and especially this one this part ye agar this part if you have understood casual prophylactic and all by this you will come to know whether this particular drug it is going to kill the erythrocytic it is going to uh, give a radical cure suppose here clinical cure the fast acting drug chloroquine mefloquine artemisinin atovaquinone halofentrin lumifentrin if i discuss about this then can you see chloroquine anywhere else no we are going to see only here under the clinical cure and here it is going to prevent the transmission only in case of the plasmodium vivax so a little bit gametocidal activity it is there otherwise for not for all the species so mainly it is a 
साइजोंटिस ऑयडल विच साइजोंटिस ऑयडल इट इज अरेथ्रोसिटिक साइजोंटिस ऑयडल नॉट द टिश्यू साइजोंटिस ऑयड नॉट द हिपैटिक साइजोंटिस ऑयड सो बाय लुकिंग दैट इफ यू नो दिस क्लासिफिकेशन एटलीस्ट वन और टू लाइन इंट्रोडक्टरी लाइन यू कैन राइट अबाउट ईच एंड एवरी ड्रग सपोज इफ द शॉर्ट नोट कम ऑन प्राइमा क्वीन सो प्राइमा क्वीन वेयर यू आर गोइंग टू सी द प्राइमा क्वीन एक आपको ये कैजुअल प्रोफिलेक्सिस में यू कैन सी द प्राइमा क्वीन देन यू कैन सी इन द रेडिकल क्योर देयर हेयर ऑल्सो एंड देन प्रिवेंट द ट्रांसमिशन हेयर ऑल्सो प्राइमा क्वीन सो एट द थ्री प्लेसेस सो प्राइमा क्वीन इट इज गोइंग टू वी वी कैन यूज इट एज अ प्रोफिलेक्टिक सो इट इज गोइंग टू गिव अ रेडिकल क्योर सो देयर इज प्रिवेंट द रिलैप्सिस and it is it has got the gametocidal activity in almost all the species but we won't be seeing it is not going to provide any clinical cure it is not erythrocytic cyzontisoid this whole thing it is shown very beautifully in one of the table in tripathi i will just show you that so just go through this table by looking at this table at least you can write few lines about any of the individual drug like if i see here this this column the first column it tells about all the drugs then pre erythrocytic erythrocytic and hypnogoids that is your this thing which is going to uh, cause of the relapses and next which you are not able to see because of me that is the gametes this this column is about the gametocidal activity and next this is about the resistance and last one is about the adr so at least uh, uh, focus this one pre erythrocytic erythrocytic pre erythrocytic erythrocytic hypnogoids and gametes so you can see here almost for the pre erythrocytic or which is the cause of the malaria now which uh, drug it is active which which we can use as a casual prophylactic for both the species it's given for the falciparum and for the vivax so for chloroquine you will see both the negative so where it is showing the positive it is showing the positive at proguanil then prima queen for both the species that's it so that means these two drug they are used as a casual prophylactic then for the erythrocytic phase or erythrocytic cyzontisoid except prima queen almost all the drugs they have erythrocytic activity whether it is a vivex if it is not mentioned vivex or falciparum that means it is showing the activity against both then onset of the action of a fast uh, intermediate or slow they are the few fast acting and few slow acting and artemisinin that is the fastest acting and then hypnogoids or the drug which is going to prevent the relapses except prima queen one is a prima queen and the latest one is a given in the same category comes a tefenoquine i'll write here tefenoquine that is the another drug which is going to act against this hypnogoids or which is going to prevent the relapses then gametocytes for the gametocytes what we have so there are the certain drugs this one proguanil star is there then gametocidal activity again the prima queen this is going to show the gametocidal activity for almost all the species whereas artemisinin okay then not for the mature gametes it is only for the initial gametes it is showing the gametocidal activity then this star it is going to inhibit the development of this gametes in the mosquito it is not a gametocidal activity so proguanil but the main gametocidal drug that is a prima queen so prima queen this is the drug which does not show any erythrocytic cyzontisidal activity but at three phase pre erythrocytic then for the relapses hypnogoids and gametocidal activity so by looking this at this table you can at least make out which drug is going to act at which phase of the life cycle of the plasmodium vivax or the falciparum so suppose if i am going to write about the chloroquine the first drug first drug what you can write about this this is a fast acting erythrocytic cyzontisidal drug no activity on the pre erythrocytic phase or hypnogoids or on the gametes just see the next slide rapidly acting erythrocytic activity erythrocytic cyzontisoid
controls the clinical attack in 1 to 2 days with the disappearance of the parasite from the peripheral blood Yes, you can see in the next slide, uh, like chloroquinine, it is a rapidly acting erythrocytic cyzontisoid, controls the clinical attack in 1 to 2 days with the disappearance of the parasite from the peripheral blood in 1 to 3 days, no effect on the pre, pre erythrocytic phase, so that means no, not used as a casual prophylactic, no effect on the exoerythrocytic. That means it is not going to prevent the relapse and does not prevent the relapses in Vivex and OL because relapses we do not see in the plasmodium falciparum. So, no gametocidal activity. So, by looking at that table, you can write down at least few of the lines on this. Now, how this drug it is going to act or mechanism of action of this chloroquinine. So, mechanism of action of chloroquinine, there are the few drugs which shares the mechanism of action like chloroquine, quinine, mafloquine, dumifantrine, halofantrine and pyronaridone all they act in a same way. So, where this parasite it reside, it resides in the erythrocyte. This figure I have taken it from the internet. So, this is a RBC. Okay. RBC ke andar, what is there? The parasite it is there within the RBC and it is going to use as its for its survival, the hemoglobin of the RBC. Once it is going to use this hemoglobin, this heme is liberated, which is, which is very toxic. And this heme, it is converted into non-toxic pigment that is hemozoin. This is the normal. So, this is a food vacuole. The environment inside it is a acidic. Once we give the chloroquine, this drug, what, what is there? It is actively taken up by the infected RBC. This is taken up by the infected RBC like the one is shown in a figure. So, once it is within this, what will happen to this? This acidic vacuole, it is going to increase the pH of this acidic vacuole. And what it is going to do this? This is going to inhibit this step, the conversion of toxic heme into non-toxic hemogen. This step it is convert, this step it is stopped by the chloroquine. Now, heme itself plus or the combination of heme with chloroquine, what they are going to do? They are going to cause the lysis of this membrane and lysis of this plasmodial membrane. So, by this it is going to kill the plasmodium. So, this is how the chloroquine, quinine, mefloquinine, lumifantrine and pyronaridone they are going to act. Again, I repeat this chloroquine, it is a basic molecule. It is rapidly taken up by the infected RBC and within the RBC, it is going to increase the pH of this food vacuole and it is going to inhibit the conversion of this toxic heme into non-toxic hemozoin and this heme, it is liberated how it is liberated because heme it is utilized by the parasite. So, this is the step it is inhibited then toxic heme itself plus its combination with the chloroquinone it is going to lyse the membrane of the food vacuole or the plasmodium membrane by this it is going to kill the plasmodium. Now, what are the, its other action apart from the anti-malarial it is used as an anti-malarial. So, it is a another action is it has got, I am just uh, writing the important one only, inflammatory action 
then it is a weak smooth muscle relaxant so this property we'll see the uses where we can use this because of its anti inflammatory action and weak smooth muscle relaxant then important pharmacokinetic chloroquine the most important it's we give it by oral route so good oral bioavailability is ki achhi it is a good the most important is the volume of distribution this drug it has got the highest volume of distribution it is more than 1300 liter because once you give it gets distributed at a different different tissues like lung liver spleen and especially the even in the eye also the retina so widely distributed so that is going to uh, their plasma concentration will be less because of that the volume of distribution of this drug it is very very high to ye isme bada important point hai the volume of distribution so half life of this drug so initial half life it is less you can say 3 to 10 days but because it is there it remains in the tissue for a longer time so terminal half life it is 1 to 2 months this is a another important thing about this so this is important pharmacokinetic feature of this drug now where we are going to use this drug so apart from the malaria ek to iska malaria mein hai ye how we are going to give it in a malaria so this drug presently we are using it for the plasmodium vivax only not for the plasmodium falciparum if it shows a sensitivity if the malaria is showing sensitivity to the chloroquine to plasmodium vivax even if it is showing the sensitivity to the plasmodium falciparum then also we can use it but in our country presently we are not using because we save for the plasmodium falciparum the resistance has been developed all over the country for the chloroquine so we are going to use this drug in the malaria then in rheumatoid arthritis then in extra intestinal amebiasis isme isko use karte hain aur for the hepatic amebiasis not for the intestinal amebiasis discoid lupus erythematosus ye iska kya hai because of the anti inflammatory i told you it has got the anti inflammatory action theek okay? hai lupus erythematosus then lepra reaction this is another anti inflammatory but remember for the lepra reaction the drug of choice is a steroid then for the infectious mononucleosis then for the photogenic reaction now for the malaria how we are going to give for the plasmodium vivax so this is how it is available in the market this is not any um, promoting any of the drug company this is just to show this is a ds stand for the double strength here it is a 500 mg chloroquine phosphate it contains 500 mg of this one because double strength if it is not a double strength then what will happen here it is 250 mg chloroquine phosphate with the 250 mg and this 250 mg it contain a base 150 mg agar 250 mein 150 hai to 500 mein how much will be there 300 mg okay 
Now just see the other side of this uh, strip. So you can see here the first dose. This is the same one, the double strand. So is me kitna hai? The 300 milligram active base. Otherwise, ye kitni hai? Ye 500 hai. Ye 500. So 1000. In a 500 milligram of chloroquine phosphate, the active amount it is a 300. Is me bhi 300. So we are going to give the 600 milligram of chloroquine phosphate. Followed by after eight hour, another 300 milligram of drug. So this is a day one. Ye day one ki. Then day two, 300 milligram, and day three, 300 milligram. This is what we are going to give for the plasmodium vivax. So this is an erythrocytic cyzontisoid. It is going to give uh, take care of the symptoms of the Malaria, malarial fever, but what about the radical cure? So, for the Vivex malaria, we are giving how we are giving day one 600 milligram after 8 hour 300 milligram day two. 300 milligram and day 3 this okay so this is going to take care of erythrocytic cyzontisoid take care of the symptoms then for the radical cure because for the in the vivex there is a axo erythrocytic phase is there that is hypnozoids so for that for the radical cure what we are going to give we are going to give a primer queen 15 milligram for 2 weeks or for 14 days or the another substitute is tefinoquine this is a single dose I will take up in detail primaquine before starting primaquine what are all the things we have to take care so this is a therapeutic uses of chloroquine and it has got the um, muscle relaxant also so we can uh, use it even for the muscle cramps then what are the important adverse effect because this is chloroquine it's not like a quinine but yes still GIT side effect they are there nausea vomiting epigastric pain And the most important is because it's cumulate, it is taken up by the deposited in the eye. So in the eye, if you are going to suppose if you are using this drug for the as a demand or for the discoid lupus erythematosus, we have to give it for a long time. If you are going to use it for a long time, so with a long time, the retinal toxicity or the eye related toxicity that is very very common. So initial. If you are giving it initially, it is going to cause the premaculopathy, which is reversible. Okay, this scotoma uh, will be there and a black spot will be there. But if you are giving it for a long time, then what will happen? It is going to produce bull's maculopathy, which is irreversible and cause the loss of vision. Okay. This is not given in the three party, it is given in the, if you are reading a parson, there you can see this one and even it is, this is with the retinal. So this drug, one is a retinal deposits and even on the cornea also, the corneal deposit will also be seen which is again reversible so this is the most important adverse effect of the chloroquine 
No. The important question is what is rationality of giving chloroquine phosphate tablet? 250 milligram, 4 tablet immediately followed by 2 tablet after it is 8 hours and then 2 tablets daily for 2 days. 250 milligram mein aapke kitne? 150 milligram. 150 milligram ki agar 4 denge to comes out 600 milligram. So 600 milligram dete, then again 2 tablet. 300 milligram. So, what is the rationality of this? We are giving a loading dose because of its volume of distribution and because of its half life. Why parenteral chloroquine? It is contraindicated in children. Parenteral chloroquine, it is now not used and especially in children. Even if it in adults, it is going to Produce a cardiovascular side effect like there will be hypotension, cardiovascular collapse, arrhythmia. And then especially in our children, it is going to produce a seizures. So this is the reason why it is not given in a children. But nowadays we do not use the parental chloroquine, not in children, even in adult also we are not using. Next question is, has Plasmodium vivax it developed resistance to chloroquine in India? So, in few of the state, it is a, it has developed with the resistance, but still the resistance, it is slow. You can see the next, here it is showing the resistance to the Plasmodium falciparum. In whole country, the Plasmodium falciparum, it is showing the resistance to the chloroquine. So, that is why chloroquine, it is not now used according to National Vector Bond Disease Control Program. This chloroquine, it is not at all used for Plasmodium falciparum. Because resistance, it has been developed to all over country. But for the Vivex, it is only at a few certain places. Okay? Like we, we can say in a Bihar, in the tribal area of the Madhya Pradesh. So there. And what will happen if we are going to give the this... Um, Chloroquine. So, after one or you are going to give this and there will be again the parasite will appear. And that word, what we use the word for this? Reprodescence. So, one word is relapse. Another one is recrudescence. Now, what is the basic difference between these two? Relapse is you have given the drug. For the Vivex, it is going to clear the whole parasite. All the parasites, they are killed. Now, the patient comes again with the fever. So, this may be a patient was febrile in a relapse, but again afebrile. In both the cases, relapse may be, but still there is a difference. Patient was febrile and again afebrile, then febrile. And same in recrudescence. This may be a year. But the difference is in relapse, this is because again the hypnodroids which were sleeping, they get activated and they are going to cause the release of merodroid which is going to infect the RBC. Whereas in recrudescence, what happens in the first stage only? All the parasites, they are not killed. So, this shows the resistance. The parasite, they are showing the resistance to the drug. So, recrudescence, it is mainly seen in the falciparum, but also seen in a vivex if the, it shows the resistance to that particular drug. So, where we have recrudescence, that is the patient will be febrile. We have given the drug, made him afebrile, but again patient comes with a fever, and because now what happens, afebrile like all the parasites, suppose all the parasites, they are killed, but few number, they are still there. Pure ke pure clear ni way. Not the complete clearance of the parasite. Then what will happen? Patient will be no complete clearance of the parasite. Then what will happen? Patient will be afebrile. But when the number is increased, then what will happen? There is again rupture of the RBC and release of the pyrogens, which is going to cause, make the patient again come with the fever. So, this is about the chloroquine and 
resistance what is the cause of this development of the resistance of the chloroquinine so you can see here this is chloroquinine resistance transporter gene for the plasmodium falciparum this is the one which is going to cause the efflux of the chloroquinine then there is a, another gene that is a multi drug resistance gene and this is going to show the resistance with the many of the anti malarial drug not only with the chloroquinine even for the quinine for the mafloquinine this gene it is responsible for the resistance then chloroquinine a few one or two mcqs chloroquinine it is given in a high loading dose what is the cause because of yes if i see here the poor git absorption no it has got the excellent high first pass metabolism no so answer is high volume of distribution next is chloroquinine it is used discoid lupus erythematosus rheumatoid arthritis yes it is a dermat infectious mononucleosis so here choices yes this now next group of drug in the same that is amodiaquine or it is a aq it is a faster acting then chloroquinine yellow powder and a bitter so we are going to isme important kya hai we are going to use it only for the treatment not for the prophylaxis because for the prophylaxis you have to give it for a longer time and if we are going to give this drug for a longer time few of the important side effect they are reported kon kon se isme aapka toxic hepatitis and a granulocytosis so what they have decided so in between like this drug it was completely stopped using this drug but when it is tried for the chloroquine resistant falciparum malaria it showed a very good result so especially in african country it has become the first line treatment for the falciparum malaria and even it has approved in our country irrespective of the chloroquine resistant status this may be a side effect is just like a chloroquine with the so here it is a it is available in a fixed dose combination of artisunate and amodiaquinone for the infants for the young children for the children and for the adult so this is a fixed dose combination which we can use especially in the Afri african country it is a first line treatment and here the side effects they are the again cornea me blue gray deposits fingernails pe hard palate pe and this is a again reversible neutropenia it occurs in children and in hiv patient who are taking the antiretroviral therapy now the next drug is mefloquinine mefloquinine mein kya hai it is a longest duration of action the longest acting is may be like if you want to write mefloquinine mefloquinine aapki it is a fast acting erythrocytic cyzontecide but not as fast as the chloroquinine no action on the pre erythrocytic phase no action on the exorythrocytic phase no action on the gametocyte so it is a longest acting theek hai iska kahan pe hoga it is a longest acting erythrocytic cyzontecide so what is the mechanism of action just like a chloroquinine and here for the pharmacokinetic so far as if you want to remember it is excreted in the bile and undergo the enterohepatic circulation this is the one which is going to make its half life or a longest acting 2 to 3 weeks it is going to act and the tissue binding so because of that where we are going to use this drug we are going to use this drug for the treatment and for the prophylaxis so we are mainly using for the prophylaxis prophylaxis for the as a, earlier also in the first video i have told for the suppressive prophylaxis how we give for the suppressive prophylaxis further for the long term and for the short term for the short term which is a less than 6 weeks we are using doxycycline 100 mg daily for the long term where we have to use it for more than 6 weeks 6 weeks to 1 year there we are going to use mefloquinone for the once a week okay if it is a more than 6 weeks 
Then for the treatment, so mefloquinone resistance that is also very very common. So to prevent this spread of the mefloquinone resistance, it is not used alone. It is most it is used along with the artemisinin derivative that is artesunate. In the if the person shows resistance in in case of the plasmodium vivax, if the person shows resistance with the chloroquine and person shows a resistance with the quinine and then we can use this combination both in vivax and in plasmodium falciparum. Mainly it is used in the plasmodium falciparum. So you can see this also this is available like this mafloquinine and artesunate uh, uh, tablet. So nowhere if I am showing this uh, strip it is uh, not like that I am promoting this company or like that just to uh, make you memorize like six tablet here six tablet is number two artesunate six tablet kaise hai? 100 milligram of each so we are giving artesunate 100 milligram twice a day for three days okay right where is mefloconine mefloconine ki kitni hai panch tablet hai so mefloconine it is a 250 milligram each tablet 250 milligram so on the first day nahi dene mefloconine on the second day we are giving 750 milligram that means we are using three tablets and on the third day we are using 500 milligram that means we are going to use the two tablets so this is how we give mefloconine with artesunates we always use this one in a combination to prevent the spread of the resistance so is me sabse important kya we are using it for the treatment, jahan pe aata hai, plasmodium falciparum. Plasmodium falciparum is further uncomplicated and complicated. Uncomplicated may we can give, but not in a complicated. Complicated may we are not going to use mefloconine even with the artesunate. So, what is the reason? The most important is this neuropsychiatric reaction. This is the reason we are not using it for the complicated plasmodium falciparum infection. So, other uh, side effect with this is GIT, then this QT prolongation, do not give it with the other drug which is going to prolong the QT interval and very rarely it is going to cause a hematological toxicity, hepatic toxicity and cutaneous and it is safe in pregnancy. Even chloroquine, safest is a Chloroquinine, chloroquinine is also, so this I forgot to tell you, chloroquinine is also safe in pregnancy. Okay? So this is about the mafloconine. So why mafloconine use is being restricted in India? To check the resistance, but the current recommendation is to use it along with the RT sonate. Next is a quinine. Quinine is a one the very much better. It is the oldest anti-malarial drug which we obtain from the bark of the cinchona tree. Okay. It is also a fast acting erythrocytic cyzontesoid but less effective and more toxic. And most chloroquinine resistance and multi it is mainly for the MDR multi-drug resistant plasmodium. This is for the plasmodium vivax and even for the plasmodium falciparum. So, multi drug resistance they are going to respond whether it is showing the resistance to chloroquinine, resistance to mefloquinine, but it is only erythrocytic size zonticide. So, no effect on the pre erythrocytic is not used as a casual prophylactic, no effect on the hypnozoid. So, it is not going to prevent the relapse, but definitely it is going to kill the gametes but not except the gametes of plasmodium falciparum. How it is going to act? Same way how the chloroquinine it is going to act. What are its important pharmacological action? It is a toxic, it is a bitter in taste. So whenever you are going to take it, uh, so it is a local irritant, analgesic and antipyretic action, antiarrhythmic, it is a uh, derivative quinidine that is an important antiarrhythmic drug, cardiodepressant is there hypotensive it is going to decrease the uh, blood pressure decreases the contractile power of the skeletal muscle so skeletal muscle relaxant it is used for the nocturnal leg cramps stimulates the myometrium can cause the abortion 
and it causes the release of the insulin because of that it is going to cause a hypoglycemia this is very important mcq now coming to uh, uh, what is its important pharmacokinetic we give it by oral is ki simple hai it's oral metabolized in the liver and excreted in the kidney so but is highly toxic it's a bitter in taste so git side effect honge plus if you are giving it by iv route cardiovascular side effect thrombosis of the vein and qt prolongation im may be local necrosis and local inflammation and if you are giving it for a long time for the uh, large dose then it is going to cause a synchronism it is going to obtain kahan se aata synchona box se so a large single dose it is going to cause a synchronism what will happen there nausea vomiting vertigo important important yaad rakho blurring of the vision so at least ye yaad rakho nausea vomiting vertigo difficulty in hearing blurring of the vision baki agar aata hai to theek hai theek hai so this is the its important side effect of the kunin now will we are going to use this one so kunin if the person it is used where it is used in mdr resistance cases multi drug resistant agar person chloroquinine resistance hai mefloquinine resistance hai then we can give the quinine for the plasmodium vivax we are going to give quinine or we are going to give quinine 600 mg 3 times a day for 7 days isko we are going to combine this with the doxycycline 100 mg od for 7 days theek hai if the person shows resistance for the chloroquine theek hai tab humne patient ko we are going to put the patient on quinine but not in if it is a children then instead of the doxycycline bachcho mein doxycycline it is a contraindicated so instead of doxycycline we are going to give the clindamycin now in case of plasmodium falciparum in case of plasmodium falciparum so already i have told the chloroquinin it is not used but wherever it is used so the first drug of choice it is a act what is act act it is a artemisinin combination therapy act is the artemisinin combination therapy so that is the first choice but in case where we cannot put the patient on act in case of the plasmodium falciparum jahan pe hum plasmodium falciparum mein where we cannot put the patient on act now you can see i think slide plasmodium falciparum where we cannot give the act or artemisinin combination therapy then we can give the patient this quinine if it is a uncomplicated and if it is a complicated so in uncomplicated this one we can use the same this oral whereas in complicated this one we are going to give the first choices artesunate see one is act and other one is artesunate act is a artemisinin combination therapy so we are using one of the artemisinin derivative along with that we are giving other drug and jabki complicated mein kya hai it is a artesunate we are giving artesunate parenterally iv at least for 24 hours 2.4 mg per kg we give this is the first choice okay if we cannot put the patient on this then we can put the patient on quinine dihydrochloride 20 mg per kg isko kis mein denge we are going to put in 5% dextrose or dextrosaline because this quinine it causes the release of insulin so it is going to lead hypoglycemia so to prevent that we are going to give it along with the dextrose or dextrosaline so this is given over a period of 4 hours and then reduce the dose 20 mg ki jagah then we give 10 mg and give it for another 4 hours till the patient complicated may complicated falciparum malaria may the patient is not conscious it is cerebral it is a cerebral malaria it is a complicated malaria where the patient is not conscious 
So once the patient is conscious, then switch over to the oral conine or oral ACT regime. This is how where we are going to use the conine. Then another fast acting drug is halofantrine and a lumifantrine. They are the amino alcohol, both are same. So halofantrine, it is again erythrocytic cyzontisoid, no other action. Mechanism of action is same. Lumifantrine B S A Kati Jaseki chloroquine. It is going to act. So here, what is the most important is nowadays this is at least halofantrine we are not using in our country. Okay. So it is uh, for the use is multi-drug resistance, but it is not used in our country because of few serious ventricular arrhythmia. So we are using lumifantrine. So, lumifantrine is just like a halofantrine. It is very efficacious erythrocytic cyzontisoid, but action is slower than chloroquine. No action on the hypnojoids. So, no anti relapse. Mechanism of action same, plus it is going to also affect the protein synthesis and nucleic acid synthesis of the parasite that is also affected. So the important pharmacokinetic feature. So it is very well absorbed with the fatty food, lipophilic. Okay. And plasma protein binding is 99%. Is the important hai ye. So we give it with the fatty food to improve its absorption. Okay. So another important is this is its contraindicator, lumifantry. Then it is not to be given with the drug metoprolol, neuroleptics or tricyclic antidepressant because it inhibits this. So any drug which is metabolized by this not to be given with this and also not given with the drug which is going to prolong the QT interval. So usually where how we are going to give this lumifantrine uses of this drug. So this drug it is highly efficacious going to clear the this one. So, always use it along with artemisinin derivative. It is given to, along with the is ACT, artemisinin combination therapy. Now, which artemisinin derivative is given? It is a artemether. A fixed dose combination of artemether with the lumifantrine is given. So, artemether it is going to take care of what it is going to take care of because it is a fastest acting. It is going to clear the parasite. Okay? And this is going to take care of the recrudescence. Whatever is left, that resistant one, it is going to take care of that. So this is how we are going to use this drug. Then next is fastest acting or next uh, is Atovacanone. Atovacanone, it is also erythrocytic cyzontisoid. How it is going to act? It is going to interfere with the parasite mitochondrial electron transport chain. Okay. Usually it is given with the proguanal. And proguanal, it is a direct mitochondrial. It is going to exert direct mitochondrial toxicity. So this is a Synergistic combination, but it is not used in our country. We use it in a different country like USA and UK. It is approved as a second line drug in pneumocystis zervakai, toxoplasma, gondii in AIDS patient. So, atovacanone, so very well tolerated with a few GIT side effect and resistance. Because of that, we are giving it in combination. Next is artemisinin derivative artemisinin derivative so this is the one which we are going to obtain from the chinese plant that is quink this we are getting from the Chinese plant, Queen Hasu. It is one of the fastest acting anti-malarial drug. And it has a many derivative, the most important which you must remember. Artisunate, 
देन आर्टी मीथर अदर वन आर आर्टी ईथर डाईहाइड्रो आर्टीमिसलिन एंड आर्टीरियो लिन इसमें ये दो आपने दीज टू यू मस्ट रिमेंबर सो इट इज अ फास्टेस्ट एक्टिंग एज सून एज यू आर गोइंग टू गिव इट इज गोइंग टू किल मोर देन नाइंटी नाइन परसेंट ऑफ द मलेरियल पैरासाइट हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू गिव वट इज द मैकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ दिस ड्रग सो मैकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन इज इट इज गोइंग टू प्रोड्यूस अ फ्री रेडिकल बिकॉज ऑफ दिस इट इज नॉट टू बी यूज इन द फर्स्ट ट्राइमेस्टर ऑफ द प्रेगनेंसी वॉट दिस से इन द आर्टिमिसिन मॉलिक्यूल देर इज वन एंडो पर ऑक्साइड ब्रिज इज देर and this bridge it is going to interact with the heme and there is a generation of free radical and this free radical it is going to produce further effect what it is going to cause it is going to cause lipid peroxidation damage the endoplasmic reticulum inhibit the protein synthesis and cause the lysis of the parasite so we have already i have told all the derivative so if you can remember like artesunate is the one which we can give by own all the route so ye yaad rakho this is given orally or i am i we need it the rest of the you can if you want to remember you remember it otherwise you can leave it now where we are going to use so it is never always use it for the treatment not for the prophylaxis it is not to be used for the prophylaxis so the most important drawback with the artemisinin is it is very good it is the short acting it act for a so as soon as you give it is a fastest acting within one or two day it is going to kill more than 99% of the parasite but it act for a very short time so this because of this short acting it is going to cause recrudescence already i have explained what is a recrudescence that means if there is a incomplete clearance of the parasite from the peripheral blood so even if the small number of the parasite resides within the blood what will happen it is going to multiply and that is going to make a huge number and it will be released and again the patient who was a febrile again come with the fever so we are going to how we are going to use this artemisinin derivative to prevent this recrudescence always use it in a combination so treatment of this artemisinin artemisinin we are act we are using it for both plasmodium vivax if the person shows the resistance with the chloroquine resistance with the conine then go for the artemisinin combination therapy it is always given in a artemisinin combination therapy to prevent the recrudescence we are going to combine artemisinin with some other erythrocytic cyzontisoidal drug and for the plasmodium falciparum if it is a complicated or uncomplicated if it is a uncomplicated then there are the certain combination and if it is a complicated so already i have told when i taught about the conine so plasmodium vivax or this uncomplicated so there are the certain combination like artisunate with sulfadoxin pyrimethamine in almost all the state of our country according to national vector borne disease control program this is a one first one in except in the northeast region of our northeastern region theek hai wahan pe aapne kya deni hai you are going to give rt meter with the lumi fan tree So at least remember these two combination whereas in complicated if it is a complicated then it is not act we are going to put the patient on rt sunate by iv at least minimum for 24 hour or till the patient is conscious 24 hours uske baad jab bhi patient conscious ho jata then switch over to 
heart is in combination therapy. So what is the advantages of heart is in combination therapy over the other anti-malarial drug is rapid clinical cure, rapid parasitological cure because it is going to kill more than 95% of the bacteria, absence of parasite resistance and good tolerability profile. So we are going to give the combination, I am not talking about only the artemisinin. So if we are going to give together, then the absence of parasite resistance is there. So these are the artemisinin combination uh, therapy regime which are approved by WHO. So in our country, everywhere we are giving artesunate, sulfadoxin, paramethamine combination and northeastern region we are giving artemether, the one which I have bolded it with the bolder one, artemether with the glumifantrine. What are other combinations like this, artesunate, mafloquinone, then artesunate, amadiaquinone which is a first line drug in the African country and now it is approved even in our country and then dihydro artemisinin with the Piperaquine. So, I have shown you, Gewal aapko dikha diya hai, then this also. So, you, you, you can, uh, this also I have shown, 3. Artesunate means sulfadoxin pyramethamine, you can see again all the, uh, this one, this is a, with the lumifantrine, okay. So, it is a fixed dose combination, she tablet hai. So, every day you have to take two tablets, BD. So, it is a RT method with the lumifantrine. Then this is a, Artesunit with the sulfadoxin paramethamine kit. So here this sulfadoxin and paramethamine get three tablets wide. They are the sulfadoxin and the paramethamine. Sulfadoxin paramethamine 1575. So each one of these is 525. 525. 525. Okay. So this is a day one. Day one me you are going to take this one. All the three tablets together. Single dose of this sulfadoxin paramethamine plus all these they are the 100 this is a 200 milligram and this is a day 2 this is a day 3 then this is a mafloquinone and artesunate this already I have told and this is a artesunate with the amodria queen so now few of the this finishes about the fast acting uh, erythrocytic cyzonticidal drug so, in my next video, I will be taking the slow-acting erythrocytic cyzonticidal drug. So, just to revise few of the multiple choice questions, like drug of choice for the treatment of chloroquinine resistant falciparum. So, I am talking about chloroquinine resistance falciparum. Here, if it is a artemisinin, agar koi artesunate or anything like the ACT, hota, then we would have, treat, it is a chloroquinine resistant falciparum. So, here it is a kuni. Then, drug of the treatment, drug of choice for the treatment of chloroquinine resistant malaria in pregnancy. So, in pregnancy, again, because this is going to cause a release of here, here trimester, the first trimester, second trimester, third trimester, but still we are going chloroquinine, that is a drug of choice, or we can put the patient on kuni also in the first trimester. Then drug of choice for the treatment of the pregnant women. This is again a pregnancy. With the plasmodium, is me yaha pe kahi pe bhi resistance ne diya If it is a simple plasmodium vivex, then we are going to put the patient directly on the chloroquine. Ha. We are going to put the patient on the chloroquine, but not giving the radical cure. Prima queen us me nahi deni hai because the, once the patient delivers prima queen radical cure, we can uh, give it afterward because the fetus is also G6PD deficient. When I will discuss Prima Queen, then you will come to know in detail. Yes. Next MCQ is choose the drug whose single oral dose affords clinical cure of uncomplicated malaria caused by chloroquine sensitive or resistant plasmodium falciparum as well as Vivex. Aapka aage kunin, mafloconin, artesunate and primaquine. Single oral dose, clinical cure. It is a definitely the artesunate. Now, which of the following is best associated with lumifantrine? Yes, it is again anti-malaria. Yahaan pe agar choice hoti, toh kaun si jati? Artemether. 
then drawback of artesunate is poor bioavailability rapid recrudescence of malaria hypoglycemia and hemolysis it is a rapid recrudescence so this finishes the fast acting erythrocytic cyanocide i have covered for amino quinolone i have covered this quinolin methanol sincona quinine ho gaya aapka then i have covered this amino alcohol halofentrin and alumefentrin then atovaquinone theek hai then this artemisinin derivative this pyronaridone pyronaridone this is also a a uh, fastest acting erythrocytic cyanocide which is used mainly in the china for more than 40 years and it is used in combination with the arteriolane and it is going to kill more than 99% of the parasite but it is not approved in our country okay yahan pe bhi it is under a clinical trial it is showing a good result but still it is uh, not approved in our country so in the next video i will be taking a slow acting erythrocytic cyanocide along with that i will be taking this the drug which are going to give a radical cure so if you uh, have any query in today's video you can ask your query in the comment section so thank you for watching my video